Hi, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at solving absolute values, equations, and inequalities. One method for all of them, which is very nice. So what do I need to know in order to solve absolute value equations? First of all, definition of absolute value, how to distribute a negative one, probably like that one, and also how to solve linear equations and inequalities. So absolute value is the distance from zero on the number line. A lot of people think, well, absolute value means it's always positive. Well, that's true, but this is why. And this is very important to remember because it's going to help you to remember how to approach these problems and how to set up your solutions. Distance from zero on the number line. You never see a negative number on like a tape measure or a ruler, or if you drive your car backwards, numbers aren't going to come down off the odometer. It's still positive. Distance is always positive. So let's take a look at this example. If we've got the absolute value of negative three, notice how far away negative three is from zero on the number line. It is exactly three units away. That's why the absolute value of negative three is three. Likewise, the absolute value of positive three. Well, positive three is three units away from zero. So the absolute value of three is also three. So that's kind of the key here, is that there's always a positive and a negative number that have the same absolute value. Opposites have the same absolute value. Absolute value of four is four. Absolute value of negative four is four. Here's where it's gonna help you when you solve. Take a look on the inside of the absolute value. One of them is always as is. Let's say the positive version. The other one, the inside is always the opposite of that distance, okay? One is as is or positive, the other one is the opposite. Same thing here, absolute value of 10 is 10. What other number has an absolute value of 10? Good, negative 10, it's opposite. So the inside as is or the inside has its opposite. Sorry, I'm fighting a cold, bear with me here. So a number and its opposite always have the same absolute value, but what if the inside is a variable? It's the same concept. If the absolute value of x is three, then we have two possibilities. Either the inside is as is, in other words, x just equals three, or the inside is its opposite. The opposite of x is three. And when you divide both sides by that understood negative one, we get x equals negative three. I already know what you're thinking. <laughs> Well, I know absolute value is three. It has to be either three or negative three. Why do I have to go through all of this as is opposites? The reason is all the problems aren't gonna be this basic with just one single variable. You might have a two X plus seven or a one third X minus three fifths. It's, it's going to get a little bit more involved, but the concept is the same. One method, all problems, doesn't matter how difficult it is. Doesn't even matter if it's an equation or an inequality, they're all gonna be worked the same, okay? Trust your Aunt Laney on this. So let's take an example here where it's a little bit more involved. We do have an absolute value, and remember your goal is to get the x by itself. You have to whittle it down where x equals a number, same as all the other types of equations. So the first thing we wanna do is get rid of our obstacles, which right now is our absolute value. So we're gonna get that guy alone by adding two to both sides, now we're gonna set up our two different solutions. One of them, the inside is as is. So imagine just dropping, dropping, great grammar, where did that come from? Just imagine dropping your absolute value and you have this first equation. Be careful, if this is all you put, I doubt if your teacher gives you a, a partial credit, I doubt you'll get any, okay? The reason is, if this is all you do, then you're saying, ah, the absolute value doesn't mean anything. Just get rid of it, okay? So you have to remember distance from zero. There's always two numbers that have a distance from zero. One's on the positive side, one's on the negative side. So you're showing the inside as is or positive. Now you have to show the opposite possible answer. So we're going to distribute a negative one to everybody that was inside that absolute value. Don't just change the sign here. Don't just make it a minus three. You have to change all of their signs, okay? So now let's solve. Over here, if we subtracted x from both sides to get a six x, subtract two from both sides, got our one. 
solve for x, we get a 1 sixth. Likewise over here, let's distribute that negative 1 and we get a negative x minus 3. Combine our x's and our constants, divide both sides by 8. So here's where solving linear equations comes in handy. Be sure you have that mastered. The nice thing is, it also works with inequalities. You don't have to learn a different method. So consider this. Absolute value of negative y minus 2 less than or equal to 1. Set up your two possible solutions. The inside as is. Negative y minus 2 less than or equal to 1. I haven't changed anything yet. Second possibility, you've got to look at your opposite of the inside. So we're going to distribute a negative 1 to everybody that was inside that absolute value. And now we solve. If you add 2 to both sides here, you'll get a 3. But recall, when solving inequalities, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, what has to happen to that inequality sign? Exactly, you have to switch it. So watch this screen. I'm going to divide by negative 1 but notice what happens to my inequality. It switched, now it's greater than or equal to. Technically you need to do it the second you divide by negative one, otherwise that step was wrong. So be sure that you switch it. And we get y is greater than or equal to negative three. Then we solve this side. Distribute the negative one, we get a positive y plus two less than or equal to one, so y is less than or equal to negative one. Now let's take a look how we can put these two together. Both of these have to be satisfied because we've got a less than one. So on the left, we have y greater than or equal to negative three. So this is what the graphing on the number line would look for just this portion of the solution. You have the bracket because it's or equals to, it's included. If we looked at this solution, y less than or equal to negative one, we have the bracket at negative one, but it includes all the solutions to the left. Well, if it has to satisfy both, where do these two overlap? Right there in the middle, between negative three and negative one. So our answer in interval notation is between negative three and negative one. So, now you try. Here are a few examples, practice problems. Go ahead and try it, pause the video, give it a shot, and then when you're ready to kind of scan over them and see how you did, hit play again. All right, let's take a look. On the first one, we have an absolute value of x plus three greater than or equal to seven. So remember, we have our two solutions. One will be written as is. Interesting, nice little extra piece there. So we would have x plus three greater than or equal to seven. And then our second solution, we're going to use the opposite based on the definition, so it's the opposite of everything on the inside is also greater than or equal to 7. And this way we don't have to worry about, wait, do we switch it on the second one where it's also less than? Do we switch the signs? What do we do? Everything falls out old school. So under the as is, if we subtract 3 from both sides, we get x greater than or equal to 4. The opposite, we're going to distribute the negative 1, so we get a negative x minus 3 greater than or equal to 7. Add 3 to both sides, we get the opposite of x greater than or equal to 7. But remember, we need to divide both sides by this negative 1 to get the x by itself. And when you divide, that inequality sign has to change. Okay, so it's no longer greater than, it's now less than. So x is less than or equal to negative 7. Let's draw a little number line over here, actually. Let's make this 0, 4, and then out here a little bit more, a negative 7. So for the x, for this part, where x is greater than or equal to 4, we would have the bracket, and it goes off to the right. And for the part where x is less than or equal to negative 7, everybody less than, negative 7 is there to the left. Thus we're using the brackets to represent the or equals to part. So this left portion here, less than or equal to negative 7, would be represented, everybody from negative infinity to negative 7, where negative 7 is included. 
in union with, in other words, also or or, we can use everybody from 4 all the way out to positive infinity. And remember your infinities, if you're using interval notation, your infinities use the parentheses because it's not an actual endpoint that you would use. Infinity is not a number you can plug in. 4 is a number we can plug in and it's one of our solutions because it's greater than or equals to 4. So we have to use the bracket. Okay, on B, same thing. We still have the absolute value, but we need to get it by itself first before we do the as is and the opposite. So let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2. So these guys divide out, and we're left with the absolute value of x plus 5 is less than 6. Okay, so we've got the as is, which would be the x plus 5 less than 6. And we also have the opposite. So we take the opposite of the inside, everybody on the inside is less than 6. So those would be our two, so let's work the as is. Subtracting 5 from both sides, we get x less than 1. Let's go ahead and distribute the negative 1 to get negative x minus 5 less than 6. Add 5 to both sides, and we get negative x less than 11. And again, if you divide both sides by that negative 1, you have to switch the inequality to greater than. So that's going to give us an x greater than negative 11. So let's go ahead and do a number line over here so we can visualize our results. I'll put my 0 and my 1 here, negative 11 way over here. And again, this isn't to scale. This is just to give us a visual to help us with our, with our answers here. So with the as-is result, we have x is less than 1, but 1's not included. So we would use parentheses. It would go that direction. And x greater than negative 11, negative 11's not included, and all the numbers greater than will go in that direction. Well, where do they overlap? That would be our solution. So everything in between negative 11, not including negative 11, and 1, not including 1 would be our result there in interval notation. So let's do the third one where I believe it was an equation, which it is, yay. Still need to get the absolute value by itself, so let's add 7 to both sides and get equal 6 and then do our two solutions. So the first one is as is. 3x plus 2 equals 6 and the second one would be an opposite, where we have the opposite of the entire 3x plus 2 equals 6. And we distribute the negative. For the as is, if we subtract 2 from both sides, we would get 3x equals 4, and divide both sides by 3, we get 4 thirds, or 1 and 1 third as one of our solutions. And on the opposite, if we add 2 to both sides, we would get a negative 3x equals 8, and then divide both sides by negative 3, we get a negative 8 thirds, which is a negative 2 and 2 thirds. Notice we're not putting it on the number line here. We're not worried about interval notation because we don't have inequalities. You're not looking for a stream of numbers, an interval of numbers that work. We have an equal sign, so we just want to know those particular values. So how did you do? I don't want you to get too frustrated. Hopefully you've got some confidence now. <coughs> More than I do with this sore throat. So if you do have any questions or you made a few mistakes, take a look back and see where they are. Usually they're easily corrected. Remember, it feels like if you don't understand, you know, it's a Grand Canyon between you and getting it, when oftentimes it's just really a small crack in the sidewalk. So figure out what is that crack? What do you have to overcome to get to this? Ask your teacher. And if your teacher and you don't mix, don't let that keep you. Don't let that be an excuse. Find somebody else. Find a tutor. Find another teacher. Find a friend. There's websites. There's more videos. 
You've got plenty of resources out there, so don't let your pride keep you from passing. Ask questions. I'll see you again next time.